we're going to look at acids and bases that are weaker than the strong acids hydrochloric and the strong base sodium hydroxide. And we will investigate the two principal acid base theories. Let's review strong and weak electrolytes. Electrolytes, of course, are ionic compounds, or in some cases, polar covalent compounds, that break up in water into positive and negative ions. For example, salts, like sodium chloride, break up into sodium ions and chloride ions, and they do so 100%. Acids, like HCl, break up in water into hydrogen ions and chloride ions 100% and bases like sodium and hydroxide break up, break up into sodium ions and hydroxide ions and of course they're always as ions surrounded by water molecules. These are 100% dissociated. We call them strong electrolytes because after they're put in water there are no more molecules, no more formula units of the NaCl, HCl, sodium hydroxide. They're all broken up into positive and negative ions. This is an animation showing how hydrogen chloride breaks up into ions in water. The water molecules have enough energy to break up the HCl and then the oxygen or negative end of the water crowds around the hydrogen ion, the little yellow thing up in top left, and the water molecules positive end, the hydrogen end, will align themselves with the negative chloride ion that you see here in the middle of the diagram. Now for weak electrolytes. Weak electrolytes, as you might imagine, are not 100% dissociated into ions when they're put into water. Most of the molecules of the acids and bases remain together. They don't break up. In AP, you'll learn that the equilibrium constant here is way less than 1. For example, organic acids like acetic, citric, butanoic, phenol, they're weak. Uh, bases like ammonium hydroxide and hydrazine are weak. And most acids and bases are, in fact, weak. Let's just look at the hydrocyanic acid. When you put it into water, before and after dissociation, and you can take a look and see the difference on this next slide. This molecule has broken up into a hydrogen ion and a cyanide ion. Now that is not very common. In fact, at room temperature, only about 6 in 100,000 molecules of HCN will break up into ions. That makes it a weak electrolyte, and in this case, a weak acid. Now you can calculate the pH of weak acids and bases, but you must use the equilibrium constant to do so. And you're going to learn how to do this in AP Chemistry. It's really not hard, but it's beyond the scope of the pre-AP class. Just remember this. The pH of a weak acid, since it's not giving away all of its hydrogen ions, the pH of the weak acid is always going to be a little higher, or maybe a lot higher, than the pH of the same molarity strong acid like HCl. The Arrhenius theory was the first to be developed about acids and bases in the early part of the 20th century. And it says that acids are hydrogen ion donors, or things that raise the concentration of hydrogen ions, and bases are hydroxide ion donors, things that raise the concentration of hydroxide ions. So, if you look at the equation, HCl reacting to form H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous, you can see that hydrogen chloride in water is an acid. It gives us hydrogen ions in water. It gives away a hydrogen ion. It is a monoprotic acid because you see one molecule of HCl here, and it's given away only one ion of hydrogen. So it's monoprotic, one proton. Take a look at sulfuric acid and how it breaks up. H2SO4 in water is an acid, yes. It gives away hydrogen ions. But it's a diprotic acid because one molecule of sulfuric acid here on the left 
ends up giving away both of its hydrogen ions. It will require a strong base in order to make that happen. Bases, of course, are hydroxide ion donors, and so sodium hydroxide put in water gives you sodium ions and hydroxide ions. All hydroxides in water are bases. They might not thoroughly dissolve, but they are bases. They give away a hydroxide ion, and they will react with hydrogen ions once they have done that. Let's take a look at a reaction that we can get off the internet. You can see a flask of ammonia gas and hydrochloric acid has been soaked so hydrogen chloride is coming off. And you can see a white smoke of ammonium chloride produced as the two gases run into each other. So what kind of reaction is this? An H3 gas reacts with HCl gas to form ammonium chloride. That's the solid, the smoke that you saw. There's your reaction. What kind of reaction? We're tempted to call it a precipitation since a solid is formed, but precipitations come from water reactions of two ionic com compounds. Bronsted and Lowry, uh, not just short of the middle part of the 20th century, called this an acid-base reaction. And they did so by redefining the acid and base. But it makes sense because HCl reacted, and in water it's an acid, and ammonia in water is a base. So I don't know why it would be a different kind of reaction just because it's not done in water. Bronsted Lowry's theory says that acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. That's a little bit different because you don't see the word hydroxide here at all. But since hydroxide does accept protons, turning into water, and hydrogen ions are protons, all Arrhenius acids are Bronsted Lowry acids, and all Arrhenius bases are Bronsted Lowry bases. So this is a very inclusive definition. Now, however, things like ammonia gas are also bases because they can accept protons. So it's time for you to practice. Identify each of these as a Bronsted-Lowry acid or a base. Sometimes it helps to name them first. Turn off the video and then come back and check your answers. You have come back to check your answers for these, and let's take a look. HBr, as you see from the red, is an acid, and a strong acid, because it can give away a proton, the hydrogen ion. And H3 is a base. We've already argued that successfully, I hope. Cyanide will take a hydrogen ion and become hydrogen cyanide. So the cyanide ion is a base. Copper 2 oxide will react with hydrogen ions and the oxygen comes off by reacting with two hydrogen ions to form water, leaving copper 2 plus behind. And we've already talked about chloride acting as a proton acceptor, although it does so very reluctantly to form, in this case, hydrogen chloride gas or hydrochloric acid. Now, every Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction has two acids and two bases. For example, the NH3 reacts with the HCl to form ammonium and chloride ions. And I have an animation on a separate short YouTube video showing this. The HCl is giving away a proton, so it's an acid. The NH3 is accepting a proton, and so it's a base. But also, in the reverse reaction, as you can see the double arrow here, the NH4 plus is giving away a proton to become NH3. And the chloride acting as a base is accepting the proton. To keep it all straight, we call the acid and base in the products on the right by a special name. We call them conjugate acid and conjugate base. 
So on the left we have the NH3 as the base and the HCl as the acid. On the right, the NH4 plus is the conjugate acid of the ammonia base. The chloride is the conjugate base of the hydrogen chloride acid. This is how we would write it. So, in this reaction, now you should be able to identify the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base for the reaction between the cyanide ion, say from sodium cyanide, and hydrogen chloride. Here we go. The CN minus can accept a proton, and so it's a base. The HCl can give away a proton, and so it's an acid. On the other side, the HCN can give away a proton, and so it's a conjugate acid. And the chloride can accept a proton, so it's a conjugate base. So practice, what would the conjugate base be for these acids? And remember, the difference between an, a conjugate base and its complementary acid is a proton. So turn off the video and then come back and check your answers. The acetic acid has the acetate ion. We just take away the hydrogen ion. And we have the acetate as a conjugate base. Nitric acid, take away the proton, you get the nitrate ion. Sulfuric acid, take away one proton, you get the bisulfate or hydrogen sulfate ion. And the ammonium ion, you take away a proton, you have just plain old ammonia.